Joining me is Tracy Lynn Cowan. She's an award-winning fitness and health expert. She's also an accomplished TV host, martial artist, and executive protection agent. Welcome, Tracy. What else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's funny because people always go, is there anything you don't do? So <laughs> I kind of answer uh, no. I pretty much, if I can do it and physically, mentally do it, then I will do it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would love to talk about your fitness and health. Um, I mean, you're a celebrity trainer as well. And so when did your passion for fitness and health begin? Fitness and health, I I laugh. People always ask me. I think I came out of the womb and I was into fitness. <laughs> I literally, I I just my whole life I've been into fitness and health. And it was funny because I wasn't really raised in a home where fitness and health was prevalent. And my parents were smokers at that time. And you know, it wasn't it wasn't a thing. So it was just in my blood. And I loved really just the way it felt being fit and being healthy and active. I've always been an athlete. I played sports back home in Canada. I was into soccer. I was into fitness. I did martial arts, not as active as I do for martial arts now, but I just really loved how it made me feel. And it just, it was my my escape from, you know, growing up in a pretty traumatic childhood and, and all the chaos that was going on. So that was the one thing where I could just get on the field and go escape and just, and be me. And I excelled at it. I did really well. And so then I got into fitness training and coaching. I started actually as a fitness trainer when I was 16 and at a very young age, and I became a fitness manager of a, a gym and a club there. And I just, I've been doing it ever since. And it's one of those things where you know how certain people, whether they're in the restaurant industry or you're a fitness trainer, sometimes they should actually quit at a certain age because they start to get grumpy and not like what they do. I absolutely love what I do every single day. I love helping people. I love kind of navigating through that for people. How do you get through this? How do you, how do you teach discipline? How do you teach mindset? How do you teach all these things that are applied and this philosophy, not only just to get people out there and get them to lift weights or work out, it's more than that. And I really break through to that and teach people how to really get that mindset and that mind shift and that paradigm shift to go, okay, hey, this is a longevity thing. This isn't just to look good. Phys the physicality is great. It's great to look good and feel good. But this is about longevity and how to live a healthy, balanced life with nutrition and fitness. And so that we can feel good about getting up every day and feel good about who we are. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what are some of the, uh, some of your clients in the past would say to you, like, it's like getting started, right? It's, it's, yeah. I think that's the biggest obstacle, if, if you will. Yeah, getting started. And there's a bunch of different things. People, you know, fall into addictions, they fall into mental health issues, they fall into injuries, which I'm going through myself right now, which is very difficult, especially because somebody is so active myself. And I have people that are in rehab, you know, different things. So <clears throat> I have celebrity clients that are professional athletes, they are actors, actresses, whatnot. So it's different mindsets for everybody and it's different elements for everybody. So it's not necessarily just that person who's starting out, but what I would tell to that person, you know, if you are just starting out or you want to start out and you don't have that motivation or that push or that drive, and you think, oh, well, it's just for that certain type of person. They love to work out. They love to lift weights. Mm -hmm. It's not about lifting weights. It's about feeling good again, just getting up, getting started, but getting prepared. Preparation is key, especially in fitness and health regimen, because if you're not prepared, you're not going to do it. That's logistically kind of, you know, how it's gone in the past. So what I mean by that is setting up a bag, setting up a gym bag. If you don't like the gym, no problem. There's all access to going out, especially during COVID. We've really learned to navigate through that and find different ways of getting out to a park, hooking up a TRX if you don't want to lift weights. TRX is a suspension trainer that I really love. If you guys don't know what that is, you can look it up. It's basically these two straps designed by the Navy SEALs originally. And you can strap it up anywhere in your home. You can take it in a hotel. You can take it to the park. 
or just get your body moving. So scheduling it in. And that's the biggest thing I would tell anybody. You guys are stuck. You you don't want to work out. You're feeling sluggish. You're feeling like COVID had you down. You know, you just don't have that motivation. But what I do is I schedule it as an appointment. So as you would schedule getting your hair done, as you would schedule getting, you know, whatever your nails done, if it's for guys, schedule it, you know, appointments, going to a lawyer's appointment, going to a doctor's appointment, anything like that, schedule it in your day. So you have it allotted into your time schedule. So, okay, we're going to give an example. Joe's got 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. He's working out. He's going to make that happen because Joe's put it in his calendar. If Joe doesn't have it in his calendar, as we know, if we're not journaling or writing a schedule for in a day, we're not going to be very effective because we're like, oh, okay, I got this to do. I got that to do. I got this to do. So what's going to fall by the wayside? Your workout. So commit that time to you because you deserve it. And it's not for anybody else. This is for you. This is for you to be focused and driven and for your health benefits, not anybody else's. You can't, somebody can't tell you, you need to go work out today. (laughs) Tracy, you should get to the gym. You know, you really should do that. Well, I don't want anyone to tell me what I really should do (laughs) and shouldn't do. So plan and prepare. It's the same with nutrition as well. If you want to be successful on a nutrition plan, I would meal prep and cut basically everything out, carve it out, and write it out. This is what I'm going to eat today. This is when I'm going to go shop. I don't want to make sure I run out of food. So I'm healthy because what do we do when we run out of food? And I'm guilty of it too. And I mean, (laughs) I've been doing this for a long time. If I don't have food and I'm starving and I'm, my energy levels are plummeting, I will grab for chocolate or whatever, or coffee or something just to fill that void. So don't get stuck unprepared preparation is key in anything in life if your job your business your relationships whether they're friends whether they're romantic anything like that so preparation is key which can also put you into that discipline as well yes and setting up a reward system too like yeah. i know for me, like my coffee so i'll have you know i'll go for that run and then have a coffee afterwards if you know with water <laughs> water and coffee <laughs> keep hydrated right hydration is a big yeah part of it. Absolutely. Uh, I really promote alkaline water because we want to have alkalinity in the body. You know, we've, there's been studies over and over and over that talk about the alkalinity, having the pH balance in within the gut. Uh, and I really am a big fan of the probiotics as well, because we want to have everything basically set up in our gut because our gut controls everything. And people don't realize when you have gut issues and inside the digestive system, that's where we cause a lot of issues. So having that alkalinity with that water pH balance, get your pH and your flora and everything balanced so that you can have a healthy digestive tract. Everything's moving and freely running through your body in a healthy way. Alkaline water is absolutely phenomenal. I, I swear by it. If you want to just do a little test and I'm going to tell you guys to try this. So drink alkaline water for the next week. If you don't have nail polish on like I do, well, you guys can't see, but if you don't have nail polish on or if you're a male, you can check the moons of your nail beds. They will go very, very white where they weren't white before. Check your pupils, take before and after pictures. You will actually, the the moons of your eyes, the white part of your eye will actually be so crystal clear white you will be amazed. And that's Mm. just alkaline water. So think if it can do that to your body in that regard, what can it do to your body internally and externally? That's a great tip. It's great information, Tracy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you- uh, saving lives too. And the thing is, is it's been known to uh, help with cancer patients. It's been known to help with illnesses, ailments, arthritis, like arthritic patients can go from zero. I mean, go from zero, no symptoms after drinking alkaline water within 30 days. It's remarkable. So there's just a, something as simple as that, or taking a probiotic every morning, you can do a 50 billion capsule. You can do 20 billion. I like the ones that you can refrigerate. 
actually Dr. Gundry, I'm not promoting, I don't work for him, so this doesn't affect me in any way, but Dr. Gundry has phenomenal, a three system probiotic, which is phenomenal to getting the flora and the bacteria back in the gut properly. I mean, there's like, when it comes to exercise, there's so many benefits. You sleep well, you yeah. are mentally, for your mental health as well. Um, it, it's just a, make a point with yourself, as, as you said, mm. <laughs> you know? But Absolutely. And that's the thing. It's, this is for you. Nobody's going to do this for you. So I like to think, I mean, when we're young and we're vibrant and we're like in our teenage years and then we're in our twenties, we're like invincible, you know, you can go out drinking and do all these things and wake up the next morning feeling like a million dollars. And then we start to see different things. And I don't promote that as well. And I don't suggest that. I'm just saying, I wanted to refer it to something and then think about as we get older, you always, I mean, there's days where I go, oh, I wish, <laughs> I wish I could still do that. I wish I could still do that. I don't feel the same way anymore. Getting rest and, and rest is so important. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. And there's four elements that I let my clients know as a, as a life coach and a consultant, I let them know there's four elements that you do not want to get to in life, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Those are four critical elements that if we hit these four elements, what I want to do is we want to check in with ourselves. We want to check in and go, hey, I know I'm feeling a little off right now. I'm not sure what it is. Is it one of these four elements? Am I feeling hungry? When's the last time I ate? Okay, great. My sugar level's low. No wonder I'm acting like this. And no wonder I'm feeling like this and I'm getting irritable. I'm getting sluggish. I feel like I need a nap. Oh, <laughs> I slept four hours last night. Why did I sleep four hours? Because my sleep was interrupted. Maybe I'm a new mom. Maybe I'm a new dad. Maybe I worked late, whatever it may be. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and get two extra hours sleep tonight. And I'm going to put that a lot that into my plan so that I can feel better and feel refreshed in the morning. Angry. My boss has made me so mad today. And this isn't my story. I'm just telling you guys the using scenarios. My boss made me so mad today. And one of my coworkers and this and that, and my wife did this. My husband did this. My kids are driving me crazy. Okay. I'm going to take a five minute timeout for me because I need to regroup, reset, rebalance and recharge and go, okay, stop, slow down, breathe, because breath work is critical, especially when we're going through stuff, take that time and go, okay, what's going on for me? Okay, great. She made me mad. <laughs> he made me mad. Maybe I was stuck in traffic. All right. I'm going to write these things down, release it, let it go, <sighs> breathe, let it go, let it go, let it go and relax and move forward. Lonely. What does lonely mean? Lonely means different things to a lot of different people. I'm sad. Maybe I'm single. Maybe it was just Valentine's Day and I didn't have a date. I feel, you know, everybody else has a date except me. I feel lonely. I feel lost. You know, why can't I find a partner? Why am I still single? Why did I have to go through a divorce? None of my friends are divorced. Again, these are just case scenarios I'm walking through with you guys. We're never lonely. Think about all the people that we have in our lives. Think about all the people we can give a call to. I have a lot of great friends. Okay. So I can't get it from that source from maybe a man or maybe I can't, you know, you are a man and you can't get that from a woman. Call your buddy, call your friends, call someone that you trust that you can have a conversation with. Hey, you want to get together tonight and go have a bite to eat? Awesome. I would love to do that. Okay, great. So that fixes our lonely. <laughs> and so hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Again, hitting all those elements, doing a check-in with yourself. And, and talking about fitness and health isn't just, again, about lifting weights and eating a salad every day. This is not what I'm talking about, you guys. This is what I'm talking about is making sure that we are connected with ourselves, you know, body, mind, spirit. So the three elements of going, okay, I'm good. I've got this. I've slept. I've eaten. I've talked to my spouse. I've made up with them. Whatever. My kids are no longer driving me crazy anymore. I'm going, okay, great. So I've hit all these elements. So now I have a solution to all these things that were bothering me. And meditation is key as well. Meditation and prayer practices that I do not miss on a daily basis. 
And if that's not a thing for you, that's fine. There are a lot of audios out there that you can listen to where people will guide you through it. So whether you don't, you know, not really sure how to meditate, or you feel like you can't really do it, because it's one of those things that's a learning process, go on YouTube and just go through a guided meditation and listen to somebody who can guide you through something for five to 10 to 15 minutes and just slow your nervous system down, relax, take that time out for you. I think that's the thing too, is just, we're so busy and we're all trying to catch up after COVID and it's just like, ah, everyone's scrambling and there's a pandemic and there's all these things going on. So we have a lot of elements against us. But I really think if we just slow down and just be good to ourselves and good to our bodies and and just relax a little bit and just process things, we can all just live a better, healthier, longer life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are multi-talented. You you are so active. And so what how do you balance everything? Like, (laughs) is there a typical day for you, Tracy? Uh, my days are always so different. And I, I always tell people that are close to me as well, because people want to have time with me and I want to have time with them as well. And so balance is a key and the balance is very difficult to maintain. So it, there is, there is a way to balance things. And what I do is I, I have everything. I'm very organized. I'm very disciplined. So in all of my affairs. So in every area of my life, because I have to be. So I have a calendar for my social life. I have a calendar for my businesses, for my different professions. So I literally have like three to four to five master calendars. And it's like, okay, so training and doing martial arts on this calendar, I have, you know, whatever I'm doing, self-defense, Krav Maga, firearms, all these things on one calendar. Then I have any type of going out with my friends, dinners, all that on another calendar. And then I have my work calendar with safe passage and volunteering. So it it just all gets put together. And then I have a master calendar on my phone and I write everything out. So, I mean, from the time that my eyes open at four in the morning, I go, okay, I'm doing X, Y, Z. (laughs) And it just, it goes until the night, but then I allow myself to have that balance where it's, this is me time. One of the biggest things I can tell you guys, and this has saved my butt in life. I do not take phone calls or you, it's very, very rare. Sometimes I break my own rules and I have to admit, cause I'm human. <laughs> I do not text people back or call people back before 8am because what happens is now all of a sudden I'm being pulled from this person, that person, I'm answering calls, I'm putting out fires, I'm helping people, I'm counseling my clients and people want something from me. And so if I start giving me away that time in the morning, then my day goes sideways really quickly. So I know I'm not allowed because I'm not allowing myself to do this because this is time for me. If I align myself, which I do, every morning doing prayer and meditation and writing down what my day looks like, then I know I'm going to be successful. If I start texting Susie, Bob, John, everybody at eight before 8 AM, again, it's just about being respectful to yourself and setting healthy boundaries within your perimeters, as well as with other people and healthy boundaries are the biggest thing that I struggled with for many, many, many years. And so That's a key thing. Also at nighttime, guys, turn your phones off, turn off social media. Don't be scrolling and posting and doing all that because we're sitting there and we've now we've engaged in everybody's stuff and they're TikToking and they're doing this and they're on Instagram. And why doesn't my body look like that? Why isn't this? And we're, our brains are going and going and going. How are we supposed to slow down and slow down the process of that rejuvenation time and we're recharging time because we can't when we're doing that because we're engaged in that. Turn the lights down, take a warm bath, light some candles, calm down. Even if you have kids, I hear this all the time. You guys are like, well, I have children. Well, your kids go to bed after you. So, or do they go to bed before you? And most kids will go to bed before you. So, you know, you have from eight to 10 PM 
this is your time. Maybe it's time with your wife. Maybe it's time with your husband. Maybe it's time for you guys. Maybe, you know, you're just going to calm down, but turn down the phone, turn off the phone, turn off the ringer, turn down the lights, relax, turn off the TV. I would turn off the TV 24 hours a day, but that's just me <laughs> because uh, there's a lot of time wasters that uh, I call in life. And that is definitely one of them. And uh, I know it's good to just unplug and rejuvenate, but uh, I do it my own personal way because I really find that that time to wind down is so critical. Because again, if you're on, you're on, you're on, you can't stop and slow down. So that's one of the biggest things for me to find balance and create that. And uh, no is an acceptable answer. I tell people no when I need to, because that is self-care, that's self-love, and that's self-respect for me because that's my time. And if I don't have me, I can't give it away. If I, I can't give it away to you if I don't have it myself. Great information, Tracy. No, thank I you. So helpful. <laughs> so people listening yeah. are really going to, you know, get some information and. You know, talk about self care, right? Is is huge, yeah. and it's okay to say no. It's okay. Yeah, That's it is, and I and I love that. Whether you're a man or a woman, and and I coach men, women, kids, and teens, whatever it may be. But again, it just learning how what a healthy what is a healthy boundary? What does that look like? And how can I maintain that on a daily basis? If I didn't have healthy boundaries, my life would be out of control. I wouldn't be able to do all the things that I do. And to, I have the energy to do it and the capacity to do it. So for me, until I can't do all of these things anymore, I'm going to keep doing them. I love it. People always ask me, how do you do so much or why? First of all, I'll answer the why, because that's a lot easier and it's quick to explain. Why not? Why do you not do as much as I do? And I'll challenge people. I, why do you not do as much as I do? Because you can, don't, do you believe in yourself? Do you think you can do it? Do we have to just do one thing? A society has put us into this box and saying, okay, you have to work nine to five. You have to be a mom and you have to sit home with your kids and be a good girl, or you have to be married. So that means that you guys cannot go have fun. You can't do this. I mean, I don't live like your normal average person. And I, being a single woman, you know, for me, it's just like, obviously I can do all those things, but if I did have a partner or I was married, I would still be doing these things because my partner would be just the same as me in male form. <laughs> so why not go out and do all these things? Why not have that fun? Why not have that balance? Unless you're looking for that, that type of life, that's very structured and that works for you. But that just, it doesn't work for me because I have the ability to do all these things and have all these different careers and help people. That's why for me, I work in health and fitness. I work as an executive protection agent, which is new that came through COVID. And um, I work with Safe Passage, a nonprofit. I help domestic violence survivors of abuse and trauma. And I also help men through that as well. It's not just a female thing that it happens to, it does happen to men. So for me, I'm able to be in all those different areas and helping people, being a survivor of domestic violence myself, you know, it wasn't one of those things where you're really excited to tell the world because you're excited about being a health and fitness expert and being great at what you do and being very successful. And then all of a sudden you go through an experience and a traumatizing experience like this. And no one really wants to talk about this. I mean, it's not glamorous. It's I'm working in Hollywood as well as a TV host and stuff and a reporter before COVID. I haven't been doing that um, since COVID. Unfortunately, that business kind of fell, the bottom fell out but it allowed me and created a space for something different. Now I'm doing the executive protection agent job, which I absolutely love. And, and I'm able to help women, children, and men, like I said, with the domestic violence and trauma counseling, I became a domestic violence counselor over COVID as well. And working with Safe Passage, which is a nonprofit, which is phenomenal as a new program director, I was promoted at Christmas time to program director. So 
We've got some events coming up, which is phenomenal as well. It's exciting to share with you guys. So I think for me, just getting out there and letting people know that it's okay to not be okay. We always try to put it together and that was my biggest problem. And I'm gonna call it a problem because I have the solution for it now. And the solution was, is being open and honest and letting people know it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I had a crappy childhood. Yeah, I went through some trauma and abuse and I went through a lot of different things. And yes, I did go through domestic violence and I survived. And I'm here to share my story because I wanna help people. And I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim anymore. And that's the biggest thing. And people, I just want to share that experience and my strength and my hope with people, letting them know it's okay, it's going to be okay. And you can get through it because there is support systems out there all over the world, whether you're listening in Canada, you're listening in, in Europe, whether you're listening in the United States of America, wherever it is, there is help. And just because I'm in LA and you guys may be in Canada, my hometown, by the way, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> We are here to help you guys and raise awareness and raise support. And again, I talk about that with men because men go through it as well. And, and it's a really prominent thing. And especially since COVID, it's just really the numbers have increased dramatically. And I just want to raise awareness so that we can help people. And in return, I wanted to let you guys know, I have a movie coming out and I'm not going to tell you the name of the movie yet, but we... I wrote a script in during COVID and I actually was writing the story about the abuse that I went through with my ex-husband. And when I started journaling, I actually realized that this was something. And so we turned it into a short film docudrama, which we are starting to film. And um, I've just been waiting because I had some significant injuries from a car accident a month ago. So unfortunately, a lot of things are on hold for me right now but we're working through it. And uh, we're gonna talk about domestic violence. We're gonna talk about the emotional, the physical, the financial, the sexual, and all the manipulation that goes behind it and how we can help people to understand all the different elements of domestic violence and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So that's what that movie is gonna be. And um, we're excited. We've got fundraisers coming up. We've got fashion shows. We've aligned with Cedar Couture. We've aligned with a bunch of different nonprofits and Raising Tactical Daughters, Lioness Tactics, who is my partner that we train with and do self-defense. So we're educating people, we're motivating, we're inspiring, and we're providing a platform for, for people to understand what to look for, whether it's a family member that's going through it. So we're raising awareness. We're blowing the roof off of this, which people don't necessarily want to talk about. And we're also helping people uh, fight against human uh, trafficking as well, which is a huge thing going rampant in our world right now. Oh, you know, it's um, like, I like when you say it's okay not to be okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, the first step, like when you're starting to work out or, you know, it's like, the first step in, you know, being open, you know, and sharing yeah. your, it's the dialogue, having that dialogue with that person. And it's a safe place to be, as you said. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if you are, you know, abused and people are listening to this, like, you know, how, how can people get involved, um, Tracy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a great question. And, and so first of all, reach out and let us know. You can send me a private message as well. Uh, I'm assuming that we'll have all my contact information up there. And again, wherever you are in the world, I can give you that, provide you with that information in your city or your town or your country, whatever it may be. And there are local hotlines for domestic violence. And so you can look that up in your neighborhood. And there are nonprofits like ours, like Safe Passage, where we provide platforms for these women and children to come in and men. And they come in and we basically will counsel them. We'll put them through our programs. Our programs look like vision board classes. Our programs look like dressing for success, resume writing. Uh, we'll go through counseling and reprogramming and we'll help with any aesthetics things. Um, so say you were, you're, unfortunately this happened. So I'm going to mention it. Uh, you've lost, you know, teeth missing. You have your face burnt or physically hurt in, in some of these things. We do have doctors that will work with you and help you. And we're also opening up a healing center. So not just one, but we're going to be opening healing centers all over the world. 
What is a healing center? I'm glad you guys asked. Uh, a healing center is a place where you come and it's safe. We're going to provide counseling again, provide more programs like chiropractic care, more programs for massage. We're going to be doing nutrition and fitness while I'll be running those programs. We'll provide self-defense so that you have the tools to protect yourself, whether it's a stranger attacking you, whether it's a partner attacking you. And, and so we're going to be teaching you and educating people. It's going to be for women and children at first, but we will be opening up healing centers for men as well. And that's going to be a separate thing. So for now, we're working out of our two locations. We have one in Van Nuys and Thousand Oaks for safe passage. And we're excited to be opening up again. We'll be opening up in LA soon, and then we'll be moving all around. Canada is on our list and these are, it is a nonprofit. So you can donate to our nonprofit safe passage so that if you want to help, you can help us so that we have enough money to be able to put these programs together for our women and children. And we also have arts programs for the kids as well and helping them healing through the trauma with the counseling and the leadership programs, as well as we're also helping animals. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but animals actually are being abused in domestic violence homes. And sometimes you can look it up because I don't want to share with you the because I'd probably cry, but there's a lot of things where they will hold the animal hostage and they will not only physically abuse an animal in order to get back at the victim or the family member, but or kill the animal as well as children um, going through this process as well. So there's a lot of education that we need out there right now. So we're providing those programs. I do do a podcast, Life Unleashed with TLC. We're going to be talking more about this. And we're going to have Christine on the podcast, which I'm very excited about. And so that'll be coming soon. Yeah. So we, we just really want to share with you guys, let you know that you're not alone. And the biggest thing that you can do is reach out to somebody in your community, somebody you trust and let them know if something's going on, let them know if you're being abused. Again, it's not just physical violence, you guys. It is emotional, spiritual, sexual, financial. And it can also be with people going through immigration cases and things like this as well. So if you guys have any questions, I would love to help you. If you wanna send me a message, Christine will put up my links and my and contact information for you guys. And if you want to get in, you know, the program with Safe Passage or you want to do some counseling with me, you can reach out to me. I also do online counseling as well. So and self-defense, we're going to be doing some programs here. I'm going to get healed up from my injuries from a car accident. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do my stuff right now, but I do have people on my team that are helping me with that so they can do the physical part right now. So I would suggest if you guys don't have any self-defense um, information or any techniques or tools in your toolbox, I would suggest that you do that in your local area and take a self-defense class and learn how to protect yourself, not only self-defense physically, but as well as self-awareness and being self-protected because there's a lot of things going on in the world, as you guys know, and a lot of crime. So one key, two key things I'm going to leave with you guys with the self-defense is Get off your cell phones when you're in public. Be aware of your surroundings. Have your keys prepared in your hands. If you're about to go into your house or you're about to go into your car or you're about to lock your car, take a sweep. What I mean by that is I want you to look over your right shoulder. I want you to look over your left shoulder. I want you to look in front and I want you to look behind you. I want you to know who's around you at all times, okay? I want you to look in your car before you get into your car. Lock your doors once you get in your car. Lock your doors when you get out of your car, have your keys prepared. Again, look around, look around your house, look around your apartment, look down the hallway, look before you get into your home, lock the door immediately behind you and make sure that you're safe. I know it sounds really simple, but it could be something that could save your life today. It could be something that could save your life tomorrow. Your family members, teach your kids this, please, you guys, simple techniques, just little things. And again, I'll be doing some seminars. So if you guys want to watch that simple techniques of how to get out of chokehold, somebody trying to kidnap you, somebody trying to put you in the car that you're, they, you're not, they're not supposed to be grabbing you, someone trying to grab you and pick you up, somebody trying to take you away from a location you're at and being aware of 
do your surroundings in a nightclub, being aware of your surroundings in a restaurant, hide, getting your, having your drinks and just knowing where you are at all times and letting someone know where you are as well. That's very critical because a lot of us, you know, there's social media out there and there's dating apps and all these things. So you guys got to be prepared and be careful. Let somebody know where you are. Whenever I go out too, I mean, people are like, oh, you can protect yourself. Why are you doing that? Well, because I want to extra protect myself and I want people to know where I am at all times. So I'll drop a pin. I'll let you know. I'll share my GPS tracker with people that I trust because if I don't come home and God forbid that will never happen. But if that was the case, at least somebody knows where I am and they can come find me. So yell, scream, yell for help and run away. If somebody is threatening you or somebody is trying to harm you, run and scream and yell for help. Okay. And that's the biggest thing I can stay. It's not, I'm not teaching people how to fight. I'm not a fighter. I don't like to fight. I don't want to fight, but if I have to fight, I will fight. And I, I like to teach other people and it's, it's, it's not fighting, but it's self-protection and it's self-defense. And so I'm teaching us how to be safe. I'm teaching you how to be aware. I'm teaching you how to be aware of your surroundings at all times, especially women. I mean, there's, it's great too, because you do have self-defense tools on your body, like your hands. You can poke people in the eye. You know, you can do a lot of different things. You can use your purse to hit somebody. If someone's trying to rob you guys, you're, is your, say, let's say you have your purse and someone's trying to steal your purse. Are you going to fight them for that purse? Do you really want that purse? I know if it's a Versace or a Louis Vuitton or whatever it may be, give them it, throw it, give them it and run and scream. Don't ever try to protect any of your property. Your, your property is not worth losing your life over. You can have anything of mine, as long as it's not somebody that I care about or myself, uh, I will give you anything that I own. You can take all the money in the world. You can take my car. You can take every purse that I have, <laughs> every shoe that I have, but you're not going to take me or somebody that I love. So those are just key tips. And I know I talk a lot, but I'm super passionate about all this stuff. And I want to share with you guys as much information in a short amount of time so that I can just help save and protect you guys and just raise awareness and just know that you guys are loved, know that there's help and support out there and there's people that do care. Wonderful, helpful information, Tracy. I mean, it's just so worth <laughs> um, Yeah, absolutely. Just take the purse, run, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely. And it, cause again, it's simple little things. Cause it's, it's an actual natural response for us. And we do techniques and drills like this in self-defense. It's like, Oh no, no, no. You know, you'll see little old ladies fighting, you know, these big six foot four men that are mass and you've got a gun and these little ladies are like fighting for their purse. It's like, I mean, no offense to little, you know, someone's grandma, but I'm sure your purse is probably maybe from Target or Walmart, or it's probably not that expensive. And your life is worth more than this $20 purse. So give them your purse. I know, I know there's probably things in there. I, I know we've got lip glosses and we've got a lot of stuff, but take it, just take it, let it go. I mean, and I would tell anybody this, you know, anybody this, and especially guys too, we have robberies out here all the time with watches. And I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy in LA, unfortunately right now, but just give them, give them whatever they want. You know, I, I, but don't hand it to them, make it a little bit harder and you, you toss it, you get it out of your way. So what I do is if someone was to try to take my, my watch, I would take the watch off or if I had money in my hand, I just got out of the bank machine and I'm not paying attention and somebody tries to rob me from behind. I'm going to throw the money away from me so that he's not on me or she, whoever's trying to rob me. I'm going to throw that money. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to run because what does the robber want? He wants my money. I don't know. Maybe he wants to kill me too. I don't know. I but I'm not willing to risk that because I'm not going to stick around to find out, but he's going to get what he wants. He's going to take my money that I just got out of the ATM 
I'm going to throw it and I'm going to run. I'm going to run to safety. And I'm going to yell, help, help, help. That's the other thing too. People are scared to scream and yell. When we're kids, we're screaming all the time and we're like, ah, little maniacs and that's fun and it's acceptable. But this is acceptable when you're in a situation like this because I, a, I want to save my life. I want people to know I'm in danger. And I want to yell for help because even if it's me and I have self-defense tools and I have, you know, self-defense skills behind me, I still am going to yell for help because I want somebody to know that I need your assistance. And I just, maybe I can't do it on my own. Maybe there's multiple attackers. There's so many different scenarios, but again, you guys, no purse, no watch, no jewelry, nothing is worth it. Nothing is worth losing your life over. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, well, you know me, I would probably talk forever. So I just want to add that um, I know we're all going through a lot in society right now, and we're coming through this pandemic, and we're coming through a lot of different things. I just want you guys to know that even if you're struggling, maybe you're having suicidal thoughts, maybe you're going through, through some mental health issues, maybe you're going through some addictions, maybe you've lost a loved one or two, or you know whatever you're going through, just reach out to people that you trust, reach out to somebody that you can talk to, let them know it's okay to not be perfect all the time. It's okay to not be okay. Like I say, let them know, Hey, I'm struggling. I could really use your help. Do you need money for food? What do you need? Like, just tell people what you need. It's okay. Cause I've struggled where I've eaten at the 99 cent store. And that's been my, you know, that's what all I could afford it sometimes. And that's okay. It's not, it doesn't make me a bad person. It just, it's where we're at, where we're at. And so let people know, because there are people that care before it's too late. You know, some people get to the point where I lost people from suicide during COVID and it just breaks my heart to not know, to know that they felt like that was their only choice. So you guys are not alone. There are people out there. Reach out to people and just anybody. I mean, I am available 24 seven. Well, except before 8 a.m. as you guys know. <laughs> and uh, but if it's an emergency, I will make an exception for you. And I just want you guys to know that you're loved and just keep moving forward and um, be good to yourself. Be just take time for you and give yourself some self love read a book, wind down, have a nice aromatherapy candle bath, aromatherapy, you know, just take time for you and just love on yourself like you do onto others. And if people want more information, where can they go again, Tracy? Awesome. You guys can find me. So my, all my stuff is TLC Unleashed or Tracy Lynn Cowan, Tracy with an I, because I like to be different. And you can also find me on social media everywhere. Again, Trace and Count or TLC Unleashed. And my website is tlcunleashed.com. And if you guys want to email me, it is tracilynn.cowan at gmail.com. Thank you very much. And I would love you to come back. Yes, I know. Because again, it's like, how much can you talk in a short amount of time? <laughs> and if you guys have questions and you want to let Christine know you want information on some different things, I will definitely do the second segment. You guys let us know what you need and what your wants are so that I can be prepared for you next time and uh, have whatever information you guys are looking for. So yeah, definitely follow me on social media. So just send me a message and let me know how I can help you and be of service. And then you guys will see Christine on my show very, very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you do. And you're amazing. And I'm sorry that I didn't let you talk tonight, but I just get very excited. <laughs> no, no. You know what is the people are passionate, passionate. And it's so just, I loved it. I loved our interview. It wasn't even an interview. It was a conversation. So <laughs> uh, you're a blessing to this planet and keep doing you. And thank you for the opportunity today, Christine. I appreciate you allowing me to be on your show and keep doing amazing things. Keep shining bright. And, uh, and just, we were going to have a beautiful conversation with you on the phone and uh, we're going to get you on my podcast. It's going to be live. So I want to talk, maybe we'll get you on in the next two weeks. So you guys, thanks for everything. Be safe out there. Be aware and uh, just know that you're loved.